the team from France, as if you couldn't tell with all the cheers. Isabelle de la Belle and Olivier Schoenfelder in third place after the original dance. They had the lead after the compulsory dance, but dropped all the way down to third and now trying to come back. beautiful pivot. They are masters at innovative movement and connection. When you say that, how much is it the coach or the choreographer coming up with those connective elements, or how much is it the skater is being inventive? It's both. It's really both. It's sort of body proportions, strength of each of the skaters and flexibility, plus the, the innovation of the coaches, vision. Most dancers reach out, go to theater, go to different dance troupes to really get ideas. So it's a, it's a combination of many things. Mm Very difficult lift because she rotates almost into a jump and he catches her. They're both very strong skaters. Sometimes a coldness, you don't really get a feel that they're looking into one another's souls or eyes, so to speak. way of entering into this dance spin, making great use of choreography in, in the transitions. Very strong. He extends into a spiral position while he was lifting her, and these are turns called twizzles problem with unison and control. Isabelle and Olivier train in Lyon with Muriel Boucher-Zazoui. That's their coach. She also coached Anasina and Pezera to the Olympic gold medal. And Anasina and Pezera, by the way, have won the last four Trophy La Ligue. Not on the scene this year, though. Interestingly enough, choreographed by Margarita Drabiasco and Pavelis Vanagas. The Lithuanian team was fourth last year in the world. Some problems on the dismount of that lift. And this is their first outing this season, so they were getting some of the nerves out. They're in front of a hometown crowd. Slowing down on some of the footwork here at the end of the program, the diagonal step. It has a lot of point, lot of interest, great points of, of interest. They had great moments and some sticky moments where the connections were just a bit off, but it's the first time that they've performed it. Did it measure up to the Americans, Belvin and Augusto? I think it certainly has the potential with the mistakes and some of the, the slow points. 
Tracy Tanneth and Benjamin watching <laughs> backstage, watching the monitor, and uh, they'll wait for the marks as well to see if De La Bell and Schoenfelder can make a move or if the Americans will stay on top. Their choreography was, was traumatic. It was serious. It had an interesting tone. You can see movement like this makes them original, a balanced move. But this is where they slowed down a little bit in their footwork. They made some just a collection of minor errors where their feet would get too close and they just kept coming to the front part of their blade losing speed. But this highlight move, a beautiful lift showing great strength and flexibility between them. And have a look who's watching, our friend Gwendell Pezera. He's in the building. Well, Pezera was a heck of a skater, still is, even though he's not in the eligible ranks anymore, but he started that long hair trend for the guys <laughs> in ice. That's the only thing about him. First set for technical merit, 4.9 to 5.5. Well, the program is jam-packed. They just had some problems on the footwork sequences. Presentation marks, there they are, and it's enough. 5.3 to 5.8. A 4-3 split by the judges, and it's the Americans now dropping to second place, and the French, De La Belle and Schoenfelder, have the lead. Svetlana Kulikova and Arseny Markov from Russia on the ice trying to medal. Very powerful. The free dance is definitely one of their strengths. Music, Fire on Ice by B. Mortizavi. Like the Ukrainians who we just saw, Kulikova and Markov train in Newington, Connecticut. Tatyana Tarasova is their coach. They are both originally from Moscow. young, although not as young as Tanit Velvet and Ben Augusto, but they're both 21, and in ice dance, Susie, more than the other disciplines, you do see skaters extending their careers much later. You do. I think it takes a long time to, to develop unison and to de develop the artistry so necessary for ice dancing. The longevity there, too, because you're not doing a lot of the jumps and some of the more strenuous pounding. This is a team that won the bronze medal at Skate Canada. They're trying to do at least that right now, replacing the Americans. But I know this is also a team, and being around the judges a little bit, that the figure skating community really likes, thinks this team is on the move. They do. They have a lot of energy. And they also have Tatiana Tarasova in their court. It doesn't hurt. It doesn't. She has great connection with ju the judges she has a she's a power and there is plenty that still goes on in the back rooms even with the new interim system of judging absolutely it's been nice to see the system working here and there but again week to week you still have panels of judges that have have had their problems They often come to two feet like they are here in the stop position. This is not skating. And that's my biggest criticism of this team. That when they segue from each piece, 
in their program. They, they tend to stand there and not really skate. So it's more for effect. Here, two feet. Simple forward skating with an easy twizzle turn, and then the same turn repeated. Whereas with the French and with the Americans, you saw varieties of turns using both feet, all four edges. And that's, you can get caught up in the emotion and the movement, but the judges have to look at the feet and look at these positions to determine who the best team is. <laughs> well, they're happy. Well, I certainly, they're, they're, they're spicy, and I like that. They, they've got a lot of spirit, and they are much improved from last year. Well, who do you like, the Russians or the Americans? They're backstage, and it's Belvin, Benjamin Augusto, uh, pretty much stone-faced. He's got a little smile on his face, but uh, they're going to wait and see. Well, Della Bell and Schoenfelder, to me, had great choreography. They were much more difficult, and they skated with a little more, oh, I'd say, sophistication than Belvin and Augusto. I still think the Americans should be placed ahead of this team, however. Their highlights are certainly passionate, high-spirited, fast and furious, and that makes them exciting. This dance spin, very nice. Nice position through the back for her. He has nice control in his feet. The footwork, not difficult. Notice how they're skating forward. This is a right inside twizzle. They get a little mismatched on the, on the connection here and then they step into the same exact twizzle. So that's easy, easy to match. They're better than that. Yelena Grushina, along with the Americans backstage. Gonna be tough moments, waiting, uh, and there's nothing you can do. Your performance is done. Kulikova and Markov from Russia. Kind of wild, the scene behind them. <laughs> Let's see now, first set, 4.9 up to 5.6. Tough to tell it, from it those is. numbers. I mean, we're looking, but what to say until you see the result. Three, four point nine. So that's not a real good sign for the Russians. Now the second set for presentation, five two to five seven, and it's not enough. That, that's fair. That's fair. The Americans are able to hold on to the third spot on the podium, a second, a third. The rest are fours for Kulikova and Markov. And it's been a rough season for the American pair of Stephanie Kalsavich and Aaron Parcham. But last night, after their best skate of the Grand Prix, she couldn't wait to call home. It, it just felt, I mean, it, it wasn't, like, perfect. I, I um, was, like, forward on my jump. But, you know, I didn't, like, put my hand down or anything. And the throw was pretty good. But the thing that was, uh, that felt the best was just, like, overall. You know, like, the crowd was all into it, and... Like, right when our music came on, they were all clapping. And, um, like, afterwards, you know, Aaron's like, that's more like it, you know? To get to where you're going, sometimes you have to drive yourself. How would I describe myself? <laughs> I always hate answering this question. I'd say I'm determined, fairly aggressive, but at the same time, I'm pretty easygoing. I would say she definitely has two sides. She has a, she has a hard-working side and she has a fun-loving side. And uh, she knows how to balance each one out. She does have a good perspective. Of course, she has four sisters that can always knock her down a notch or two when, <laughs> when it happens. She's just another, another one of the family. Yeah. <laughs> she has a great smile and she has such an honest face. Oh, she gets away with pretty much whatever she wants. <laughs> you know, sometimes I can, I guess, a little bit. But I usually don't try and pull anything out. Right. <laughs> the suburbs of Detroit are home for Stephanie, her parents, and her four younger sisters. This family unit is tight. All five girls are homeschooled and spend most of their days together. And life can get awfully hectic in this busy household. But for Stephanie, it's the backbone of who she is. What I love about my family is that when I get home from the rink or when I get home from competitions, no matter how much attention we're getting, it's not really a focus with them. They're, they're extremely proud. They're 
so supportive. Um, my parents have been awesome my whole career. They kind of let me do my own thing. And my sisters are the same way. They're, they're so happy for me. When you have little sisters, you're always going to be a role model, you know, whether or not you want to be, you just are. Your younger sister is always looking up to you, and I know I've always looked up to Steph. They're, they're so cool. Before I'll leave for competitions, I'll find little notes in my bag and stuff and write me um, good luck letters and congratulations and how proud they are. It's so cute. The Cal Savages are a middle class family and skating is a heavy expense on top of raising five children. But they do it with no sacrifice in the values they instill. It's been quite a struggle financially and that's one of my motivations is being able to get something back from this. You know, she's real even, so um, she can handle a lot. And we've tried to tell her with skating, don't take it one day at a time. A look at the big picture. Um, she has good common sense as far as that goes, so I think it definitely has helped her in skating. I hope that the kids that still have those big dreams and are just starting out, I hope that they would see that it doesn't matter what your situation in life is. If you have the determination and you have the support, then you can accomplish great things. And that's what I've realized, really, just in this past year. By the way, Stephanie's mom recently told the family that she's pregnant again. So it'll be daughter number six or son number one. They'll let it be a surprise. Let's go to Terry. The final team here in the pairs competition, the gold medal on the line. And guess who? The home team, Sarah Abbey-Bowl and Stefan Bernadi. Nine times they have won the French national title. As Peter mentioned earlier, they won the bronze at the World Championships in 2000, but there have been so many intriguing stories with this team. They have not been to the World Championships the last couple of seasons because of injuries and different things, but here they are, making a comeback after her torn Achilles tendon. Music from the motion picture, The Adams Family. Terry, she's been getting daily therapy on that foot. So they're not back 100%. Side by side, triple toe loops. Oh, and she takes a tough fall right in the beginning. just isn't back yet. This is an interesting lift. It's called the bow lift. You can see why she resembles a bow at the top of that lift. the fact that they're back on the ice is not only a testament to her and the perseverance you talked about, but also to modern medicine. I mean, a torn Achilles tendon not that many years ago would have ended careers. Absolutely true. You may remember that Surya Bonali of France went through the same thing. She came back. Only woman in the world or only person in the world to do a backflip from start to finish on one foot.
like to get this throw triple loop and there's the old Sarah a beat ball that was very nice this is a tough lift he takes her down and then just presses her dead weight right to the top around the back dismount that they cover within this performance is expression of the character within the music. You can see how they really go into this tango section and bring the character alive. inside death spiral. Well, I was always more of a Munsters fan yeah. than an Adams Family fan, but that, that was pretty good. Well, I give her a heck of a lot of credit for coming back and meeting this challenge. This was more about them re-entering the sport that they love, and what a way to do it in their home country here in France. However, it probably was not enough. you got to imagine that uh, the Russians, Tomiana and Marina, are going to win for the third time this season in the Grand Prix. What a year it's been for them. The French fans, no, they don't care about that. They're just uh, still standing and cheering for Abby Bowl and Bernadette. She's still trying to get her confidence back. Here's the triple toe loop. He lands his. She has a big fall. That was the first element in the program. And then on these side-by-side -side du double axles, you can see he got the rotation around two and a half turns, but she only did a single. And this is the throw double axle, two and a half rotations. And she just doesn't have that sureness in her feet yet to land that jump. Nice split triple twist lift here. And this is the bow lift. You have to balance perfectly over your partner's head, not move in order to stay stationary and make this lift work. Two tears for Sarah Abbott Ball. I think uh, probably you, you think about all that she's gone through to get back to this point, right. get back on I the ice, and now being here at home. Exactly. Too. All the emotions coming together for her. The first set, 5.2 to 5.6. For the mistakes that they had, obviously that is an indication there to see five threes. Let's see what they thought of presentation. Now the presentation marks much higher. And uh, boy, I tell you, had they skated without mistakes, that's a real indication that they may have even beaten the Russians. 4-3 split in terms of the numbers, the placements, but Abby Bowl and Bernadice capturing the silver medal here. But well, once again, it's the Russians who win the gold for the third straight time in the Grand Prix. Tobianana and Marina on top there with... Thanks, Terry. Sarah, Stefan, you haven't competed since the European Championships. How was it being home and having the first go at it out there in front of your home crowd? Well, it was, was difficult <laughs> yeah, for me. Yeah, it was tough for us. And uh, Sarah had a lot of problems this few weeks with uh, her jump with the... The, in, the injury that she that she had uh, at Salt Lake, and she was very uh, courageous to to go on the on the ice because uh, 
it was very hard uh, in, in our head because we didn't know what was going to happen. We didn't do a lot the, the long program and uh, what well, we just skated, it was not perfect, but we had pleasure again on the ice and uh, second for us is like winning the competition. You had a lot of tears in your eyes, very emotional. How was that? Yeah. I don't know, but I was crying before the free program and I, I was thinking of thinking of my injury and uh, it was very bad in my heart and I was afraid before skating. So I don't know, it's the emotion of the six months off and with the crowd, with the family, it was difficult for me, but I think uh, I, I will work again a lot and it will be better at the European Championship. And we'll be back. Yeah. <laughs> and I heard recently you are, have been engaged. Congratulations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, do you have a wedding date? No, not for not, the moment. Not, we just, not for yet. the moment, the ring is enough, I think. <laughs> we don't have a lot of time for anything else, just kidding. I want to just to say hello to my family in Miami Beach. <laughs> I love you. <laughs> Congratulations Thank and you. good Thank luck. You very much. Thank you.